Over this series of Real Health, we've been exploring women's health with Dr. Mark and Sister Elise from the T Clinic. And today we're joining them on their turf as we discuss life after menopause. Elise, Mark, thank you so much for welcoming us into your space for a change. It's, it's so good to be here. Now, over the series, we've spoken about women's health and we've kind of ended off with menopause. And ladies are fearful that now life comes to a crashing halt. Elise, what happens? after menopause is there life after menopause actually life goes on <laughs> there's no what happens it right. is like a transition that you're actually not aware of that um, we say you are in menopause if you stop menstruating for 12 months or for 12 cycles regular cycles but post menopause means it's now over, that you're not menstruating, you're not fertile anymore, and life just continues as right. usual. What are the physical changes that we may now be experiencing once it's all settled? I think the most prolific ones are the ones that we have inside the brain. So physical changes, not necessarily, but there are physical changes to the brain. The mass of the brain starts decreasing. Postmenopausal women, after they had the hot flushes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, complain more about the lack of mental acuity, um, that forgetfulness, the little bit of anxiety, depression that still remains, um, not being as sharp as what they used to be. The problem that we have is, as humans, we have engineered ourselves now to live so much longer. A lot of women didn't make it to menopause, never mind even through menopause. Now we're gonna live for 20 to 25 to 30 years post menopause. And I think this is where the new kinds of treatments that we do really come into it own, its own for a simple reason. Hormone replacement therapy or menopausal hormone therapy decreases inflammation, it decreases pain, it increases mental function, and those are the things that we need to continue with a good quality of life. Right, right. So Elise, does it mean that every woman post-menopause should be going through some sort of treatment, or is it a case-by-case -case situation where um, if you're finding that you're experiencing more of these symptoms you would need to engage with the Yeah, process. I want to touch on um, what Dr. Mark said about the mental facilities that uh, it sounds terrible to say the mental facilities decline but that is a real thing. Mm. Women nowadays are all career women and they are the first ones that realize okay I'm not that sharp anymore. Mm. I can't remember, I can't focus, I can't concentrate. Um, Back to the question, not every woman has the same symptoms right. post-menopause. May, may I interject, Elise, uh, when you say that 20% of women will not have any menopausal symptoms. Okay, at they, all? At all. They will have, like men uh, of a certain age, a slow, steady, mental decline right. but not symptoms of menopause. Okay. Correct, okay. yeah. But yes, the eighty percent do need help and there is help. I mean yes. and it's not necessary to feel that you can't cope you can't cope but come and do get see a health pr mm -hmm. practitioner to help with menopausal hormone therapy. When we look at the traditional way of treating menopausal women with hormone optimization or hormone replacement therapy it was widely accepted, Elise, help me if I'm wrong, um, to stop at the age of about 65. Right. Now, studies like the Women's Health, and Health Initiative, and we've spoken about it at length, suggest that for the majority of women, you continue far longer into life, up to 70 and 80, depending on what type of treatment you're giving them because the type of treatment and the route that you're administering at um, has an impact on the safety okay. but for the majority of women it continues afterwards like life continues yes, yeah. this continues as well Elise, in terms of lifestyle factors, what other things should women post-menopause be considering that they may need to shift, change or adapt um, to, to help them along the way to extend that quality of life 
um, in conjunction with any sort of hormone uh, therapy that they may be undergoing. All the literature say look after yourself. First of all, if you have bad habits like having lots of alcohol, smoking, quit, try and not do that. Um, look after, exercise regularly, look after your bone density because that's something that really declines. Look, of, look at your cholesterol levels because bad cholesterol is the culprit that gives women after menopause, post-menopause, cardiovascular disease. Okay, okay. And that goes back to our um, um, statistics that we had that women post-menopause is more likely to die of heart attacks and strokes. Right. I, I like what Elise have said. Um, when we say exercise, exercise can be sitting in your chair like I'm sitting now and just twisting your body. Mm -hmm. um, that's exercise. For our patients who have osteoporosis or osteopenia, um, sitting and just like this tapping your, your heels yeah. is enough impact to stimulate bone formation. Okay, so it's so movement and it's resistance movement. of some there's, kind. There's really, you do not have to go and run. Hmm. Um, walk, brilliant. Let's be honest. If you haven't been an exerciser hmm. your whole life, you're not, not going to do it post-menopause. Yeah, yeah. So do whatever you can. Walk, take stairs, um, like Mark says, have the movements, hmm. do your own washing, do whatever, that's exercise. Yeah, I think in, Don't I, sit on your couch yeah. and wait for life to pass you. Mark, a big question when it comes to life post-menopause is sex, because I think a lot of women are fearful that menopause means the end of their sex life, but actually it's just the end of their reproductive life. Absolutely. You know what, now is not the time to be scared of getting pregnant. It's not going to happen. Um, I think for most women in their postmenopausal years, it's about the discomfort. Um, menopause leads to vaginal dryness, vaginal atrophy, and that becomes uncomfortable. Now, there's very easy things that we can do about that. There's lubrications available in all your health stores in your pharmacies online. Use them. Um, there are treatments that are available. We spoke about PRP treatments, et cetera, et cetera, that reinvigorate that um, mucus producing um, and lubricating cells in the body. So that can be done. Sex is such a great exercise for older people because it gives them a very good cardiovascular exercise, it gives them a release of endorphins. M so movement. Movement. <laughs> well, you know what? Yeah. Um, we, I but it's important. I think that is the big thing. I mean, it, it's, it's another element of life, element of movement, invigorates the body, the mind, the soul. I mean, at least from, from your perspective in terms of patients that you see, what are, what are some of the, the, the uh, feedback that they've given you? Um, I want to start with them, uh, the woman specifically coming and saying they feel so guilty because they don't want to have sex with their husbands. And it's a mental thing, but also a physical thing. And as soon as we start treating them, the husbands runs away. Right. So that is, that's the, the, the positive side of coming in for treatment or asking your healthcare provider, I need this yeah. and I don't know how to get it. I will also run away if you guys start chasing us with Don't put that on, please, guys. <laughs> Mark, in terms of a sex life, and to Lisa's point, just because your libido might have changed and, and uh, it, it, it's a mental thing, doesn't mean you can't repair or, or improve on that so that you can really enjoy those later years. I'm going to let Elise answer that question, but I want to leave you with this. The biggest cause of sexual dysfunction is sexual dysfunction in a partner. Now, if that is pain or discomfort in someone, it will lead to avoidance, and that is going to create a sexual dysfunction in the other partner. I'm not worthy, or I'm not good enough. What is wrong with me? And that then leads to breakdown in relationships. So for us to be in a relationship, sex is important because it reinforces and strengthens 
the physical body. I want to add that that guilty feeling, um, because I don't have the interest in sex, is exactly what Mark said, relationship breakups. And that comes where you get the statistics that 40% of married couples gets divorced when the woman is in menopause, oh post-menopause. That's a huge yes. amount. I did not know that. No. And it's a huge thing. And all I, my message is, don't go that route before you haven't seek help mm, mm. to maybe somebody to tell you, okay, this is normal what you feel yes. and there is treatment for this. And I think that's a big point as well to somebody who can actually emotionally support you while treating you in some way potentially. Correct. To help you understand that it's not your problem. Yeah. You know, it, there are ways out of it. And also the communication between the couple is, is so yeah. important and to be encouraged to engage in that. And I that's why we also like for couples to come together yes. when this, um, the sort of problem. Right. It, they do understand then each other when they leave our practice. Absolutely. Well, Mark Elise, thank you so much. A lovely way to round up um, this discussion or these discussions that we've been having on, on women's health. So thank you for inviting us into your space. Mark, just people who want to get in touch with you, how can they do so? Very easy. Elise always says that we are on Facebook, and we are. Um, we have two practices, one in Umschlange, one here in Bryanston, Johannesburg. The number is 010-824-1393 and the website is www.theteclinic.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having us here. Thank you.